fucking what? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! All right, we're coming back to Muse. How about that? Muse fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. This is a request from DJ Samuel Rogerio. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not, not Rogerio. Rogerio. I'm sorry, my bad. Samuel Rogerio. Gmon78, Alot Punch, Miralex, and Skrillet. Skrillet. There's no vowels in this. I, I think I think he's trying to say Scarlet, but there's no vowels. It's literally S-C-R-L-T-T. -T. So Skrillet. Sure, why not? We'll go with that. Skrillet. Skrillet. Anyway, uh, they all wanted to see me react to this song by Muse called Newborn. Now. To the best of my knowledge, I've never heard this song before. This does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a chance I may have heard it, and I just don't know it. So, as always, if I start listening to the song, and I go, Oh, wait a second, I've heard this before, I'll let you know. That's the truth! You know me, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This was posted by Stairway23. And this video has 144,374 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What are you saying? You ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Muse, newborn, live at that place. You're not even supposed to say the name. Apparently, the algorithm can pick up on you even saying that name. And it can block you just for that. So, I'm not even going to say it. Yeah, Muse, newborn live at blank, <laughs> 2004. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. <laughs> with it as long as there's a reason for it. Okay, um, yeah, it's been a minute and a half. I better pause. Okay, um, a lot of stuff happening there. Okay, so it started off with all the all the pinch hallmarks, the the squeals and stuff. Started off with that. Don't know if there was really a reason for it, but it did lead into the song, so I guess I guess that's okay. Um, the piano and the bass riff working together there, uh, not playing the same thing, but working together with, the, with with their lines coinciding with each other and uh, complementing each other really well, actually. Especially with the lack of drumming. I mean, there was hi-hat going, but there was no kick. So it's really going to be up to the bass player at that point to keep the pulse of the song going. 
Uh, that's really going to be his job at that point. I mean, it's usually his job anyway, but I mean, he's got it by himself, though. Usually the, the bass and the kick drum work together to keep the pulse of the song going, to keep the tempo going. Um, without the kick, it's up to the bass. Uh, sounded really good. I like the tone the bass player is getting on this, actually. Really, it's got a full, deep tone, but it's got just enough punch in it to uh, make you feel the accents, which is really nice. What was really cool is right before I paused it, it, it was going along a nice clip, and then it just suddenly decrescendoed. It wasn't subtle either. It was a, it wasn't sudden. It was a very rapid decrescendo, a very quick decrescendo, uh, which was really cool. And it leads into that feeling of, oh, something big's coming. Something's going to happen. And it's, it gives you that feeling of anticipation, which is really nice. Really, really cool. So I'm curious to see where this goes now that they hit that decrescendo. Let's see where this goes. So now the song is officially kicked in, I'm, I'm getting the feeling. That was a long intro. It was long, but here's the thing, and I, I've said this before. I don't mind long intros as long as there is a purpose behind them and as long as they move along and they, and they push forward. And that was a great example right there of what I'm talking about. That intro never lost my attention, even though it was like a minute long. It never lost my attention. It kept me engaged. It kept moving. Um, it had a great pulse. It set up the song perfectly. And then when the song actually kicked in, um, it just seamlessly went into it, which was really nice. So I have no issues at all with a long intro when it's able to do that. And this video, this song clearly demonstrated that. So nice job. Really nice job in the intro. Let's back it up about 10 seconds and let's keep going. Like I, I'm assuming that was the chorus when it went into a halftime feel there. I'm assuming that was the chorus. Really smooth job on that. Nice work. Very smart songwriting when it comes to differentiating between verses and choruses. Um, whenever you're able to make 
the verse sound different than the chorus. It doesn't matter how you do it, whether you do a chordal modulation, whether you completely just flat out change key, whether you change tempo, um, switch into a halftime feel like they did here. It's always pleasing to the ear because it's a definite change and it makes it for the lack of a better word it makes it idiot proof so anybody listening can tell there's a difference this is different this is a new section of the song this is a new area of the song that we haven't been to yet and it makes it easy for the listener to differentiate between verse and chorus so smart smart songwriting Really good job. I mean, Muse has always been really good about writing smart songs. I mean, there has not been one song Muse has written, I've, I've, I've heard from Muse yet, that I cannot say was smart song, that was not smart songwriting. Every song they've I've heard so far from them, songwriting has been very intelligent. <clears throat> so they got that going for them, which is really good. Um... I always appreciate smart songwriting. And they don't overdo it. That's the And that's the other half of it. I mean, you could be as intelligent as you want with your songwriting, but if you overdo it and you overcomplicate it, you start to lose the crowd. And this is one of the reasons why I became disenchanted with prog rock. I was really big into prog rock. And then I started listening to it, and I was like, what if we just want to rock out, you know? You can't. You can't just rock out to a prog rock song because... A lot of songs and a lot of bands in particular, I'll, I'll mention one in particular, Liquid Tension Experiment, LTE. They are way out there. Like, they get so far out there that it becomes almost unlistenable. Like, it's so complex. And it kind of ruins it. So, that's one of the reasons why I became disenchanted with prog rock is it just... I just got into a mode where I just didn't want to do that anymore. I just didn't want to sit there and count measures the whole time. I just, I didn't think it was fun when I got exposed to other bands like Motorhead and the Misfits. And I'm like, man, these guys are rocking out and they're having fun and they're not worrying about making, you know, <laughs> seven, four fit into a three, eight phrase. You know, they're not, they're not worrying about that. They're worrying about just rocking out, having fun and putting on a great show. So, and these guys are able to do both. They're able to have some complexity, not too much. They're able to have smart songwriting, but not overly complex. And they're able to rock out. So they're they're walking that razor's edge, that fine line, and they're walking it well. So there you go. <laughs> on that guitar solo um so from what i can gather he's got a knob down here by the bridge of his uh of his guitar it, it's a pitch shifter it's like a, it's like a whammy pedal uh but it's with a knob so he turns the knob you know and the pitch of the guitar goes up which is cool i've never seen that before on a guitar but then he's also utilizing an actual whammy pedal because I heard, again, I heard the pitch shifting while he was doing the tapping and stuff. I heard the octaves going up and down and up and down. And that's from a pedal. So he's got a whammy pedal and a whammy knob. Good Lord, what if he what would happen if he used both at the same time? Ooh, that might be unbearable. I don't know, but whammy pedals are very touchy. Like, when whammy pedals are used correctly... I'm not, and I'm not talking about wah pedals. Wah pedals, it, the note doesn't change. It just changes the the form of the wave. It just uh, of the sound. It just it creates an envelope, and it's 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 cool. I, I like what I like wah pedals. 
Whammy pillows are hit and miss with me. Sometimes I like them if they're using the proper setting. Sometimes I don't. And when they overuse them, it gets really annoying. Um, especially if they have it set on the two octave setting. Like you can set the whammy pedals to whatever you know range you want. You could do it, you know, anywhere from a single semitone all the way up to like. I know the one I used to have. I used to have a Digitech. Uh, it was a, like a, a two octave range up and a one octave range down, and Boy, it, when you program it to get that three octave range, it was, man, you would go up on that thing. Ooh, God, it would get, it would be almost unbearable to listen to. It was so screechy. It was so overpowering. Uh, I never really used it. I experimented with it a couple times, hated it. So I just kept it on single octave only. Um, but I just find it interesting that he's got a knob and he's using a pedal. I've never seen the knob before. That's cool. That's really cool. It's convenient too. Anyway, that the, the reason I say it's convenient, I was going to move on, but I got to make this point. Uh, the reason I say it's convenient is that way he's not a slave to the pedal because the putt, he can't take the pedal everywhere with him. So what if he's moving around the stage and he has to use it? What is he going to do? Run all the way back there and use the pedal? No, he's going to stay with the pedal the whole time. But by putting that knob on there, he doesn't have to worry about it. He can take he can literally take the effect of that pedal anywhere he wants because it's now on a knob on his guitar, which is if you really think about it, it's actually kind of brilliant. Wonder why more guitar players don't use stuff like that. Anyway. Alright, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I know I liked it. I don't know how much I liked it. I'm going to have to think about that. But I, I know I liked it. I know I liked it. Let me just, let me figure out how much I liked it. And I'll see you in the review. Well, there you go, folks. That was Muse with Newborn. This was a request from DJ Samuel Rogerio, Gmon78, Alok Punch, Miralex, and Skrillet. Yes. Anyway, uh, so there you go. All right, on a scale of 1 to 10, I had to think about this. <laughs> I, I knew I liked it, but I didn't know how much I liked it. And it turns out I liked it actually a little bit more than I originally thought. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that an 8.6. Yep, 8.6. I feel good with that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay, songwriting. Um... I love how Muse writes their songs. I do. And, I, and it, they write it in a very intelligent way. They put a lot of thought into their songs, and you can tell they do. Um, but they don't make the songs overly complicated. They give it enough thought that they think, they, and they write songs intelligently in a way of, will this fit? Will this work? Is this going to be too far out there? Is this going to be too complicated? And I haven't found a song yet from them where I've said, I can't listen to this because it's too complicated. 
Uh, I haven't found one yet, and I hope I never do. Um, no, this song is it's intelligently written. Uh, there was a lot of thought that went into it. You could tell because there was a lot of transitions, uh, in especially in feel and tempo that were that were designed to uh, show where new parts would start. Like here's the new part of the song. So like, well, let's take a look at the intro for starters. Okay. So you had this free form, um, no sense of tempo whatsoever, just, you know, guitars, you know, squealing and, you know, getting the pinch harmonics and stuff like that. And that's cool. There was that. Then the piano came in and the bass came in with the piano. The bass player set the tempo and they were off and running on this part. Then they had that rapid decrescendo and it came down, 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 down into the song. And then the song started officially. It's stuff like that that I'm talking about. Very intelligent, great execution. Um, the transitions from verses to choruses. I believe, I believe it was the chorus that was the halftime feel. Very smart. Loved that. Um, really loved that halftime feel, actually. Um, so when I'm talking about songwriting, having thought being put into it without overcomplicating, this is what I'm talking about. As far as the song itself goes, like I already talked about the bass player having a great tone on the bass, sounded really good. I love the pattern he was playing, simple pattern. One, three, four, one, three, four, one, three, four. You know, one, one, three, four, one, one, three, four, one, one, three, four, one, one, three, four. And then he had, you know, changes. And he would do inversions on the changes. You know, when he, would, when he was going down, he was staying up to simulate uh, the inversion of, I believe it's the, which would be the third. And then up to the inverted fifth. Okay, so it was an inverted fifth. Um, but really cool nonetheless. Uh, again, going back to smart songwriting without it being too complicated. I mean, the pattern was simple. It was just, the, it was the same, uh, as far as the rudiment goes, it was just the same eighth note. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And three and four and simple, really easy, um, but effective, very effective. Drumming was really nice, had some great tight fills in there. I didn't really get a chance to talk about the drumming at all. Shame on me, because the drummer was solid on this, like really solid. Um, even with the fills he was doing, and what I loved about it is when he did make the transitions from the straight time to the half time, you talk about seamless. I almost didn't catch it. Like the first time he did it, I almost, like about two measures went by before it hit me. This is half time all of a sudden. I mean, that it was that smooth, so. Kudos to him. Uh, the guitar playing. I had mixed feelings about the guitar playing. Um, it was good. It had it had good feels. It had a good tone. It had everything about it was good. The 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 whammy. Um, this is just me personally. Okay, I I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this, but I also know a lot of people are also going to agree with me on this as well. Me personally, I feel like the whammy effect was a little overused, just a little. I'm not talking about you know a horrendous amount of overuse. I'm talking like a little, like not even that much, like about that much. You know, just a little. Uh, I think you could have laid off on it just a tad. I, mean, it, I, I see the reasoning why. In the solo, it's fine. At the intro, it's fine. Outro, it's okay. But in the verses and stuff, eh, I don't know if it's really all that necessary. You know what I mean? It, the, the vocals should be the emphasis at that point. But, you know, I'm not amused. I'm sure they have the reasoning for it. I'm sure there's a purpose behind it. I didn't catch it. Uh, and I just feel like it was a little overused. The singing was really great on this. Uh, I know he's he's got a great falsetto. I've mentioned that before in other videos uh, that I've done on Muse. He's got an amazingly clear and well-supported falsetto. It does get a little thin, but it's still strong, which is weird. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's hard to imagine a falsetto that's strong, but yet it has that thinness to it. So, but he's got it and he, look, he makes it work for him. So I, I can't knock it. So overall, I was really, I was really impressed with this. I, I really was. I, I enjoyed it. I did like it. I didn't realize how much I liked it until I really thought about it. I was thinking originally before I thought about it, I was thinking like, 
8.3, maybe 8.4. But then I thought about it, and I was like, no. No, I, I thought about all the things I liked. I was like, no, this needs to be higher than that. So that's why I settled on the 8.6, which is a great score. So, 8.6, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you did enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It'll do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.